Hi, my name is Carol Beth Anderson. I'm an indie author and I also produce my own audiobooks. I use Audacity, which is free open source software. You can use it with Mac, Windows, or Linux. And that's what I use to record and master and edit my audiobooks. Now let me tell you what I'm not. I am not some sort of professional sound engineer. <laughs> so I'm just someone who has figured out what works for me. This YouTube series will be showing you what works for me using Audacity for my audiobooks. And it may not be what works for you, but it'll give you a place to start if you're trying to figure out how to use this free software to do your own audiobooks. Sometimes I can make things possibly overcomplicated, but I think that when you take when you take the time to set up certain systems within Audacity, even though it looks complex at the at the start, it can make things go really smooth as you learn the system. And so to me, it's worth it to put in this time from the beginning to have uh, an editing process that can go smoothly once you get used to it and that can result in a really nice, uh, a really nice final product that you can then submit to ACX or whoever it is that you're submitting your audiobooks to. Let's get started with some initial setup. Assuming you've never used Audacity before, let's get started. First, you'll need to download and install Audacity. And to do that, you would probably just search for Audacity. We go to this first link and you're going to click download and you've got it and then you'll install it as you would install any other software. Once you've got Audacity, there are certain plugins that we need to make all of these this process work. And so this is what Audacity looks like once you've got it open. You can go ahead and open that up. And then I have a file that I call Mastering and Editing Audiobooks in Audacity. And uh, this file is available for free. I'll put the link on, um, it's just a, a Google document. I'll put the link in the comments of this video. But you can also get this file and a lot of great information on narrating if you join my Facebook group, which is Authors Who Narrate Their Own Audiobooks. Now this is specifically a Facebook group for authors who are narrating. There are other Facebook groups available for people who are narrating for others, but uh, this one's specifically for authors who are narrating. Whether or not you join the group, you can get this free document, Mastering and Edit Editing Audiobooks and Audacity. And this document has links to certain what's called Nyquist plugins for Audacity. The first one we're going to go to is called ACX Check. If you are in an area, in a country that allows you to use ACX, which is the basically distribution arm of Audible and Amazon, and it also dis distributes to Apple Books or Apple Audiobooks, if, if you're in an area that uses that, ACX is kind of a nice way to distribute your, your audiobooks. It's certainly not the only option. But ACX has certain requirements that an audiobook has to meet, certain technical requirements. And this plugin called ACX Check is, um, it will allow you to easily check whether or not your files are meeting the requirements of ACX. First, though, uh, before we do that, there's also a link called Download and Install Nyquist Plugins. Let's click on that because that'll tell you how to download them. Um, and there are links here on exactly how to install them for Windows, Mac, and Linux. The nice thing is there's now this actual plugin within ACX that um, makes it easier to install, to install your plugins. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So let's go back over here. We'll click ACX Check. You can always Google this if you're not in my document. ACX Check. We would click Download and we would download that. You can download it to your, uh, to your, um, uh, your downloads folder. You can download it to your desktop, wherever you want to download it to. Let me show you what happens after we have downloaded that. Let's go back over here to Audible, I mean Audacity. We're going to go to 
add remove plugins because all these different plugins that we have, they often have to be um, enabled because they might be on your system, but you have to enable them. So we're going to click add remove plugins. And first you're going to go down to a plugin called Nyquist plugin installer. Click on that. If it says disabled, mine said disabled until recently, all you do is you click it and you click enable. Mine's already enabled and you click OK. Let's check and make sure that was enabled. We go up to tools and you should have the Nyquist plugin installer right there. So we would click that and then you would browse and you would find whatever Nyquist plugin you just downloaded. So if you just downloaded ACX Check, maybe you downloaded it to your desktop, maybe you downloaded it to your downloads, whatever you downloaded it to, you would find it, double click on it, and then you would click OK and you would be able and you would have that plugin in your Audacity available. And then you would go and go back over here and you're going to click punch, copy, and punch, paste. These are two different plugins. I'm going to scroll down and download both of them. By the way, I am in, I forgot to tell you this, I'm in Safari right now. I don't use Safari for, I, I'm on a Mac, I don't use Safari for downloading these plugins. It messes them up. I use Chrome for downloading these plugins, okay? So if you happen to be on a Mac, I would use Chrome instead of Safari. It's going to just make it easier for you. So you're going to download Punch Copy and Punch Paste in, in Chrome if you happen to be on a Mac. And then uh, we're going to go here. We're going to download what's called Noise Gate. And we click here where it says Download. And lastly, we're going to download what's called RMS Normalize. RMS Normalize. There we go. So we would click that and download it. Then you would go back to Audacity, go to your Nyquist plugin installer, and once again, you're gonna find each of those files that you have downloaded, click open and click okay to install each of those plugins to your Audacity. And then you'll need to go to Effect, Add Remove Plugins, and you're gonna find all those plugins. So like we would go down to ACS check, X check. I have two um, versions of this. I have an old version and a new version, but you would find the one that you just downloaded. It would probably say disabled and you would have to click enable. You would do that again for punch copy and punch paste. And just for all of these plugins, make sure that they are all enabled. So that's our first step is just downloading and enabling all of these different plugins. Pretty simple, right? Now we've got the plugins that we need. Let's go to our document and see what's next. Um, I want to show you a couple of little things that you're just going to need to know as background information, um, uh, kind of basic information for, for using Audacity. Let's do a really quick recording here. I'm just going to... Um, When you record, you always have to select which microphone you're using. I'm clicking built-in microphone because I'm just here on my computer right now. If I was actually recording a book, I would have a microphone plugged in, a much higher quality microphone than the one that's in my computer. And so I would select that microphone. Just so you know, if you're on a Mac, I don't think this is the case on PC or Linux, but if you're on a Mac, then um, when you, if you already have Audacity open, when you plug in a microphone, you'll have to completely quit Audacity and reopen it, and then you'll have that microphone in your list. So if the microphone that you plugged in doesn't show up on your list, um, mine shows up as what's called a scarlet interface because um, I plug in my microphone to an interface. We're not getting into gear right now, but if your microphone or your interface doesn't show up on your list, you just quit, quit Audacity, restart it, and you should be able to select that microphone. So I'm using the built-in microphone. We're just doing a little test thing right here. I'm going to stop it. I usually use the space bar to stop my recording. And by the way, I usually use R to start my recording. It's just a little easier than coming up and clicking this. But you can use the record button and the stop button if you prefer. The space bar works for starting and stopping, recording or 
right? It doesn't work for starting recording. The space bar works to stop your recording, but it also works to start or stop listening. So um, if we go back to the beginning and click this little skip to start, and we click the, the space bar, we're just doing a little test thing right here. That, and then I push the space bar again to stop it. That just shows us what we just recorded. We can actually hear it there. Now, whenever I am working in Audacity, this is called a waveform. This that we've got right here, that's a waveform. You're seeing basically kind of the volume. I prefer something that gives me a lot more information than volume, and that is called spectrogram view. And this will make more sense as we go, but just know whether I'm recording or I am editing, I always look at spectrogram view. So I click up here where it says audio track. I click to spectrogram. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way to, to um, default to spectrogram view, so I always have to change it. And then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to drag it bigger because I can see more. So this is my recording. In spectrogram view, the, uh, the color and kind of how dark the color is indicates volume. So anything that's this light blue is really, really light colored. A little bit darker blue, uh, I'm sorry, anything that's light blue is really, really, um, uh, the volume's very low. A little bit darker blue, we've got, um, we've got higher volume. The, the pink parts are even higher volume. If we had a really high volume, in fact, you can see it a little bit here, We've got a little bit of white here. The, anything that's white is kind of the highest volumes that we get. And so sometimes you'll see a really dark pink that's pretty, pretty loud. Um, so you'll start to get used to that. A lot of this will become very intuitive as you start to work with these files. The other thing that Spectrogram View shows us is it shows us the frequency. So you've got really high frequency sounds that the human ear can't even hear. And then you've got really low frequency sounds that the human ear can't hear. But the human ear can hear most of what's in between. And, um, and in general, your low frequencies are going to be your, your low sounds and your high frequencies are gonna be your high sounds. But there's actually, um, sometimes it's a little counterintuitive. Sometimes I'll hear what sounds almost like a chirp and it'll be in a low frequency. So. Um, these frequencies, excuse me, frequencies will become really important later as we're editing. So if all of that, if none of that made sense to you, that's okay. Just know that you always want to switch it to spectrogram view when you're here in Audacity, whether you're recording or editing. Some other notes here, most of the effect settings in Audacity are set it and forget it. So we're gonna be going through and changing some settings on these plugins and these different effects. But um, usually you just have to change it once and, um, and it's going to be where you want it to be. We always want our project rate to be 44 100 hertz. So check that before you start recording. And for recording for, um, for ACX, you're generally going to want to record mono recording up here, mono. All right, so that's just some stuff to check. And again, set it and forget it. But the mic, excuse me, the microphone is one thing that you, um, you're going to have to continue to, to check every time you record because you might be unplugging and plugging in microphones and so you'll have to actually change that setting. If you ever can't hear, check your output. I've got a built-in output so I'm listening through my computer speakers and um, you just want to make sure it's on the correct output. All right, another note. To select an entire track, this is called a track here. We're going to have some multiple tracks later where you're going to have another track down here and another track down here. A track, um, when it's a track, you can hear all of the tracks at once that are stacked on top of each other. To select a track, I just click in this like sort of gray area right here. That selects the entire track. You can tell because the color kind of changes. All right. And then I would just select down here to deselect it. I'll just click down here or even click within the track and that would put my little, my little um, marker in a different place. I use the back skip to the beginning button a lot, skip to the end, I sometimes have to use that, so these are great skip buttons. But again, you've got some, I'm just gonna repeat this because it's important, you've got some really great built-in keyboard shortcuts where if you want to start recording, you can use the R button. If you wanna stop recording, you can use the space bar 
um, I'm sorry, the R key, not the, um, the R button, the R key for recording, the space bar for stopping recording, and the space bar also works for starting or stopping playback. So I would click where I wanted to start listening, and then I would click the space bar. I'm going to stop it. I usually, and then I would click the space bar again and it stops. You're welcome to use these more traditional buttons up here. I just find it easier to use some keyboard shortcuts. Let's go back to the beginning again. Also, if you ever need to select multiple tracks, you can go up to select all or, <coughs> excuse me, or you can do command or control A, command on a Mac, control on a PC. And if we had multiple tracks, that would select all of them. But when we do have multiple tracks, lots of times we only want to select one track, and that's why I'm in the habit of clicking over here to select that track. All right, so before you do any recording, you're going to want to have, um, there's a checklist that you're going to want to have. I'm going to be honest, I rarely check my checklist, but um, uh, I rarely check all of them. There are certain things I remember and certain things I don't, but I always try to turn off my air conditioning because it can come on and off. And any fans, like exhaust fans, now a ceiling fan in the next room isn't going to make a difference, but my recording spot is my walk-in closet, which is right next to a bathroom, and it's also, uh, it's kind of on the other side of another bathroom and a, um, a laundry room. All of those rooms have exhaust fans. And so I... Um, I don't, um, I, I never have those exhaust fans on while I record. They can literally ruin a recording, having an exhaust fan that's near to you because it just puts this underlying noise that you can't really edit out. Um, I told you, you always want that 44, 100 hertz. I really never remember to check that. You just kind of need to set it once. You make sure that your microphone is set and you make sure that mono is set. But again, most of that stuff, not the microphone, but most of it, set it and forget it. Um, when you're first getting set up for the first time, you would want to record a small sample longer than I did, maybe a couple of minutes. And then we do that thing that we call ACX check. So I'm going to select this entire thing, go up here, and actually it's in analyze, go to ACX check because we did, we, we enabled that plugin. Let's see what it says. Okay, it's telling me that my um, peak level is a little too low. Again, I wasn't using my regular microphone, so I'm not too concerned about this right now. My RMS level was too quiet, and my noise floor, the big thing we're looking at here is noise floor. And it passed noise floor. Noise floor means you, you're, you're in a quiet enough space. And so um, if your noise floor is too high, um, basically the required is negative 60 decibels or lower, so it could be negative 70, negative 80, whatever. It's okay if it's a little bit higher. I mean, negative 50 might be fine because you can do some noise reduction to fix that. But if you're like way over that negative 60, you're probably gonna need a quieter space to record. And um, we're not gonna get a lot into our recording space right here. There are plenty of other YouTube videos on that, but you want a place that's not only quiet, but also has some sound, um, kind of dampening materials. That's why I do it in my closet. The, the clothes act as sound dampening. And I also have some blankets draped like over um, over a door and a half wall or a, a small wall uh, to, to reduce um, echoing. So, um, so that ACX check is just gonna give us an idea of where we are. And um, another thing for recording is there's, um, in fact, I don't know if this is something we have to, I'm just going to check something real quick. Um, um, let's see, punch and roll. Okay, I think punch and roll is just automatically set up on ACX. I don't think you have to enable that as a plugin. Um, punch and roll is a way to record where, um, where you, can, um, uh, you can record something and then when you mess up, you can click where you messed up. Let's say we messed up on this portion. You can click on it. You can click, I think it's shift D for punch and roll, but look that up. I think it's shift D and you can set up punch and roll where it will play back for you the last few seconds of what you just recorded. And then it will automatically start recording over that messed up part. It'll get rid of the net messed up part and it'll just start recording. Um, 
I'm not going to talk a lot about punch and roll because honestly, I don't use it. I love it. I have used it. But something with the recent versions of Audacity and my Mac, it's not working properly. It looks like it works, but then uh, the audio ends up having a lot of like cutouts where it sounds really choppy. So I don't use punch and roll. So I'm just going to encourage you look up a YouTube video on how to use punch and roll. It's fantastic for recording if it works well on your computer. So um, that's just some stuff to know about recording. But before we go any farther, let's get into a little more setup with some things that are going to make our process easier. So um, this part that I'm going to get into now, really you don't have to do it until you've recorded your first chapter if you don't want to. So um, get that first chapter recorded, do the best that you can, know that you may have to re-record that next chapter, that first chapter, and that's totally okay to have to re-record it. But um, um, go ahead and get it recorded and then you can work on setting up some stuff that's going to make your editing and mastering a lot easier. So um, this is these are some shortcuts and um, um, again this is one of those things where you're going to set up stuff in advance that's going to take some time to set up but it's going to be awesome because it's going to really make your process faster once you get used to this system. So I love keyboard shortcuts. They make my editing way, way faster. I mean, they save me hours and hours over the course of a book having these keyboard shortcuts set up. So let's go back here. Um, we've got all this info on mastering and stuff and editing that we're going to skip past because we'll get back to it later. And we're going to go to, in this document, um, I've got time savers, shortcuts. Okay, some things in Audacity already have shortcuts. For instance, there's this awesome thing called, um, oh, where is it? Repeat last effect. It's grayed out right now because I haven't, I haven't actually done any editing on this, um, on this particular, um, this particular clip. So I don't have an effect to repeat, but let's say the last effect I did was I faded something out. In fact, let's do that. Let's select this part and I'm going to click fade out. This does this tiny little fade. You can kind of see it change. If I wanted to fade it out even more, I could go to effect, repeat fade out, or I could just use command or control if you're on a PC, command or control R, and I can use it as many times as I want and repeat the last effect without having to select it from my menu, which is pretty cool because there are certain effects you're going to want to do several times in a row to get them to where you want them to be. Fade in and fade out are some of those effects. You're trying to get it faded just the right amount. And so that control R or command R is so much faster than going up here and selecting something from a menu every time you want to repeat it. So um, that's one of the built-in keyboard shortcuts, but we're going to set up a bunch of our own keyboard shortcuts. So to get to keyboard shortcuts, there is a keyboard shortcut and I'm sure there's a way to find it too. I'm just actually not sure where, <laughs> where the keyboard shortcuts are on this, um, on the menus. I actually don't know where they are. I use command or control comma for my keyboard shortcuts. So hold down your command or control key and click and, and, and hit the comma, um, key and you'll, you'll pull up your keyboard shortcuts. Oh, apparently they're under preferences. Let's see here. Oh, I don't even know. Oh, they're probably here. Preferences. Hey, hey, there they are. Preferences. All right. So keyboard shortcuts. We've got a bunch to set up. And the nice thing is we've got a way to search for these. So the first thing we're going to search for is what's called noise reduction. Let's search for noise. There it is. Noise reduction. We're going to click on it. You're going to set up whatever keyboard shortcut you want here. And the way you set it up is, is you don't type in command plus one. What you do is, by the way, this would normally not have a keyboard shortcut associated with it. Um, I have already set mine up. So normally this would be, oops, this would be blank. We'll click clear. There we go. It would be blank normally. And you would click command or control, hold that down, and then click one. So you're using your keyboard to click command or control one, and then you would click set, and then you would click okay. 
I'm just clicking cancel because mine was already set up. So then we would have that keyboard shortcut would be set up for, um, for noise reduction. See, there it is, command one. And um, so the next one we're going to do, let's go back over here, is what's called filter curve EQ. We'll probably have a, an entire video on EQ because EQ is so important when we're doing our mastering and editing. Right now, I'm not gonna explain what it is. We're just gonna set up the shortcut for it. Command or control two. I'm sorry, I didn't actually search for it. Filter curve, by the way, filter curve, I think is one of those that you may have to go up to your um, effect. Let me just get out of this. Add, remove plugins. If you don't see filter curve right here in your effects, you're gonna have to go to add, remove plugins, find filter curve and um, and then enable it, okay? Any of these plugins that you don't see, you need to enable. Let's go back to that command or control, comma, filter curve, filter curve, and if there's nothing there as a, or if there's something there, you can always clear it, but there shouldn't already be a keyboard shortcut there. There's not one that's set up, and then we would do our command or control two, and again, you would click okay. I'm just gonna click cancel because mine's already set up. RMS normalize, command comma, RMS. Command or control three is what I like for my, um, my keyboard shortcut for RMS normalize. All right, you would click okay. Limiter, uh-oh, what just happened there? Oh, it's because I'm clicking OK. I'm clicking Enter, and it thinks I'm saying OK. Don't click Enter when you're searching. All right, we would find limiter. I would set that up as Command or Control 4. I've already done that. And then we've got Noise Gate. That's one of those plugins we just put, we, we already installed. I would set it up as Command or Control 5. Auto Duck. Be a while before we use this one, but let's set it up now as Commander Control 6. Macros. By the way, you're actually not going to um, set this one up yet because we haven't set up any macros yet. We're going to do that later. Once you set up a macro, you're going to... Um, I forgot what my macro is. There it is. You're gonna find the macro that you set up already and you're gonna set it up with a keyboard shortcut. But don't worry about this part yet. We will do that later. Um, punch copy. That's, this is another one of those plugins that we already set up. Punch copy. It's actually called punch copy slash paste for whatever reason. I would set that one up as command nine. And then punch paste, I would set up as command or control zero. Oh, by the way, here's punch and roll. Recording, I believe that's already set up, set up as um, Shift D, but if it's not, you can set up recording, punch and roll record as Shift D, FYI. Fade down, this is a, um, a command, I, or an effect I use quite a bit, so let's look at fade. It's actually, I'm sorry, it's fade out. And I use that one, I do command minus sign and fade in is command equal sign, but it's also command. I look, I think of it as, as command plus sign because the plus sign is on the same key as the equal sign. So I would set up fade out as command minus sign and fade in as command equal sign, or you can think of it as plus sign. All right, I'm gonna change this fade out. There we go, now that's correct. ACX check, that's another Another plugin we installed, I set it up as Command K. Amplify, this is one that I use quite a lot. Amplify, I set that one up as Command M. Now, you don't have to use the same keyboard shortcuts I use. You might be like, Command M, that makes no sense to me for Amplify. I will tell you the reason I didn't do Command A is because that's Select All. I'm not gonna mess with my Select All keyboard shortcut, but um, there might be something else that makes sense to you for Amplify besides Command-M. So do whatever it is that makes sense to you. 
and we're going to, we would click OK to finalize what we had done. And now we've got all of our keyboard shortcuts set up. You'll see here we've also got this macro section. We're going to go over that later uh, once we've talked more about mastering. We'll talk about setting up a macro for your mastering. But this is all of the um, initial stuff that if you set this up, you're going to be kind of setting yourself up for some nice, um, eventually easier and faster editing. It's going to take time, but the stuff that we just set up is going to really help us in the long term with editing once you get really solid on your process. So um, take the time to do the setup on your Audacity, even though you don't even know what any of that meant. Have it set up and it'll make more sense as we move on and do more lessons. All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a question in the comments. And um, you're also welcome to reach out to me via my website, which is carolbethanderson.com.